The movie's main character is Ben, a baby-faced 25-year-old man who is always polite and friendly with others. One would imagine that he is the perfect buddy. But the truth is completely the opposite. Ben is not a serial murderer, but he can stop time and do anything he wants. Of course, he uses it to strip ladies and paint, which is his favorite hobby. Ben captures gorgeous females and takes nude photographs of them wherever they go, whether on the road, in the store, or at the movies. It was sometimes different from this. However, Ben was an ordinary person, like the rest of us. He had a loving girlfriend and a bright future. Following this, the film takes us back to five weeks ago, when everything went wrong. Ben is seen arguing with his girlfriend, Susie, who considers him a loser. He ends their relationship because he's had enough, which makes Susie even more angry. She begins throwing stuff at him, and everything goes into slow motion for Ben. After the breakup, Susie immediately moves on and seeks comfort in a man. Ben sees them together in a campus cafeteria and feels upset. So, to divert himself, he enrolls in painting lessons. Even the professor is surprised at how easily Ben creates wonderful paintings, as he has always been interested in portraiture. Ben specializes in creating very realistic human portraits. However, at night, Things get very difficult for him. Ben can't seem to get over his split. Every time he closes his eyes, he sees Susie. Days pass, and he soon develops sleeplessness. Ben is now unable to fall asleep for even one hour. The memories of his ex-girlfriend are gradually turning him into a melancholy madman. Ben, overwhelmed with sorrow and pain, ultimately calls Susie and begs her to return. He also apologizes for ruining their relationship and promises not to do it again. Despite Ben going so low for her, Susie rejects his offer and hands up. This leads Ben into an even deeper state of depression. Over the following three days, he does his best to pass the time. Ben enjoys reading, watching movies, and traveling alone to other locations. But when night falls, he has insomnia which makes it difficult for him to focus on anything else. So he begins taking random excursions in the dark as well. One night, he goes to a nearby grocery store and spots a job posting for a night shift worker. Ben believes it is an excellent chance to pass the time and make some money. So he quickly applies for the position. The next day, he has an interview with Jenkins, the manager, and finally gets the job. Ben is finally happy after a long time and he feels strongly that his life is about to change. As Ben adjusts to his new job, he observes how each of his co-workers approaches the art of passing time differently. Sharon Pont, the cashier, has the most unusual flair. She constantly hides the clock with different stuff. She feels that if she stares at it, time will pass slowly. Then, there's Barry Brickman. A cheeky person who never takes his job seriously. He and his similarly Matt Stevens, crafty pal, perform various pranks on the female clients, such as sneaking an adult toy inside their luggage. Some clients are concerned when they discover it. Nonetheless, some want to preserve it. Jenkins, their supervisor, seems to be the only one who needs clarification about time. He may go on and on about his achievements and wealth. Once he begins his egoistical remarks, time goes quickly for him. But of all the night shift workers, Ben has the oddest way of spending his time. Ben separates himself from time and reality during the waves of his intense depression. In other words, he utilizes his abilities to freeze time and ultimately, his surroundings, allowing him to do anything he wants. Usually, one would steal money or engage in inappropriate behavior. But Ben wants to enhance his creative abilities. Because he is fascinated by the female form, he chooses random clients, softly undresses them, and starts creating their pictures. Ben has no lubricious sentiments for them. He only wants to ensure that his love for art never fades. Once he's finished, he puts them back on and cracks his fingers, forcing time to flow again. This is now Ben's life. It is not anything he can be proud of, but at least he is no longer sad and mad. He has slowly but surely begun to move his attention away from Susie. Ben spends a lot of time with his closest buddy, Sean, 
At home, the two had been together since they were children. Sean is the complete opposite of Ben in that all he wants is to get into a girl's panties. It has been discovered that he has visited every stripper club in the city. During his night shift, Ben finds the cashier, Sharon, in the locker room. He seems to have a crush on her, but he can't bring himself to say it. But while they converse, the friendly cashier takes a piece out of his sandwich which surprises him. Sharon attempts uncomfortably to remove a small piece of pickle that is stuck to her face, but it doesn't work. Seeing her struggle, Ben comes in and wipes it off for her, resulting in an extremely cliched scene between the two. Sharon chooses to go and walks towards the door. Ben wishes he could freeze a moment and dwell on it for a week, but Sharon has already left by the time he realizes this. After some time, while he is working, Matt emerges from one of the stalls and announces that he is going to the movies with Sharon. Ben is devastated and wonders why he has such bad luck. He then remembers his school years, when he fell in love for the first time. She was the brightest girl in class, and everyone liked her. She got into an accident and damaged her arm, forcing her to wear a hefty cast every day. Her classmates would write encouraging messages on it to help her feel better. Ben also wanted to write something, but he was too frightened to approach her. Unfortunately, his hesitation cost him the chance, as the girl removed her cast a few days later. Everyone was happy to see her fully healed, but when they realized she had grown hair on that arm, they began making fun of her. The girl ultimately begins weeping and Ben decides to intervene. He leads her to a corner and comforts her, telling her that he will be with her no matter what. Soon, the two become close friends and, ultimately, lovers. One day, the girl unexpectedly approaches Ben and asks if he wants to kiss her. He responds yes without hesitation, and the two plan to meet at their favorite site over the weekend. Ben is excited because he is about to kiss a girl for the first time. He loses sleep over the following three days, and when the weekend arrives, he gets there early. He waits all day, but the girl does not appear, breaking his heart. The next day at school, Ben discovers that the girl has moved to another city with her parents. It was the first time he felt hopeless and sad. Back in the present, Jenkins collects all of his workers and tells them that they will be playing a friendly football game with his pals. Ben and the others do not want to play, but they have no other option. During the game, the grocery team loses significantly since it is obvious that none of them knows how to play. The rival side scores goal after goal, bringing the score to 26-0. When Ben has had enough, he stops time and goes to the locker room to rest. Suddenly, a man unfreezes himself and dashes out. This demonstrates that Ben is one of many individuals to have obtained this skill. After a while, he goes out and snaps his fingers, enabling time to return to its previous state. In the intensity of the moment, Matt kicks the ball so carelessly that it hits Jenkins in the face. He is quickly brought to the hospital, and the rest of the crew goes home leaving Ben and Sharon alone. In the next scene, the two visit a neighboring restaurant and attempt to get to know each other better. There, Ben learns that she is truly unmarried and that Matt was kidding about dating her. She then shares her fantasies with Ben, who does the same. Sharon says she has always wanted to meet a painter because she believes they can perceive the genuine beauty of things. As the two speak, it is obvious that they have chemistry. After their unofficial date, Ben escorts Sharon home and embarrassingly spoils their first kiss by kissing her on the cheeks instead of the lips. The next day, a scarred Jenkins declares that he will be hosting a party to celebrate his birthday. Sharon invites Ben on a date, and he gladly accepts. Later, Jenkins summons the guys to his office and assigns them distinct duties for his birthday preparations. Ben is given the duty of booking a stripper for the party. Although he has never spoken to anyone in his life, he knows who can assist him. Later, he begs his closest friend, Sean, for assistance, offering to accompany him to the party if they can finish the work. The two then go to a nearby bar where Sean utilizes his skills to book a female for the party. The following morning, Ben receives a call from an unidentified individual claiming to be an art enthusiast. He owns an art gallery in the city, 
and wants to display some of Ben's work there. This thrills the latter since, for the first time in his life, someone has recognized his work. Unbeknownst to him, it was a hoax call from Barry and Matt. That night, Ben gets ready for the party and goes to pick up Sharon. As soon as she answers the door, he cheerfully informs her that a well-known organization wants to show his artwork. Sharon congratulates him warmly, and the two soon leave for the celebration. When the two arrive, the party has already started. Sean is being rejected by a female. Matt and Barry are dancing like sociopaths, and Jenkins is the DJ. Just after that, Barry recognizes his ex-girlfriend, Sissy. Amid the crowd, it turns out she's Jenkins' brother's girlfriend. Soon, this stripper appears and heats up the party. Sean, in particular, instantly connects with her. Meanwhile, Ben goes to the restroom, where he meets Susie. She expresses her desire for them to reconnect and rekindle their relationship without delay. Ben, of course, does not want it since he has already found the love of his life. But the insane girl continues to request it. She even kisses him forcefully. Ben instantly pulls her away, but as he looks around, he discovers Sharon has seen the whole affair. Ben attempts to explain that things aren't as they seem, but the naive cashier walks away without hearing anything. After a while, Ben walks directly to Sharon's place and tries to explain everything to her, but her rage too consumes her. When she begins spewing obscenities, Ben becomes enraged and flees. Because of the split, he falls back into his world of sadness and insomnia. The only thing he looks forward to is his meeting with the alleged art gallery firm that contacted him. In the next scene, the day finally comes and Ben appears with some of his greatest artwork. As predicted, the gallery owner denies having an appointment with him, making Ben understand he had been pranked. But, just as he is ready to leave, the owner discovers some of his Sharon drawings and asks to see them. Unsurprisingly, he likes them, and Ben is given a night to show his art in the gallery. A few days later, Sharon gets an official invitation to Ben's art exhibition. Despite her anger at him, she chooses to attend the gallery. When Sharon arrives, she is surprised to realize that every piece of artwork there is about her. Ben stopped drawing photographs of other ladies and focused only on Sharon. She was the love of his life, and he couldn't look at another woman. Meanwhile, Sharon and Ben have finally met. The latter attempts to explain what occurred on the party night, but Sharon replies that he doesn't need to. She has learned how much he loves her just by gazing at his paintings. This brings the two closer together and leads to a passionate kiss in the center of the art gallery room. In the last moment, Ben uses his power to freeze everything. However, Sharon may now move into the frozen world. The two then stroll outside into the snow, where millions of snowflakes are floating in the air. Finally, the lovebirds kiss again bringing the film to a happy ending.